Our next topic is retail, public spaces, and manufacturing environments. Gentlemen, love to have a discussion about where does IBM kind of see you know, th this emergence of internet and things and how it fits into that space. Sure. So, you know, from a, an IBM perspective, there's some really interesting technology around that has played really well in the retail space and public spaces and also in the manufacturing space. So a little bit around geolocation, you know, how do we actually understand where you are if you're in a shopping mall with some of the iBeacon technology and connecting those iBeacons up to the cloud, you can actually start to understand patterns of movement of people as they pass through retail malls and things like that and you know where are they do we want to push them a special offer do we want to push them some kind of coupon you, you're outside a particular store we know that last week you were outside that same store you went in you looked at a particular item okay so let's push you a promotion 20 percent off that particular item you know, we can actually do that now with iBeacons and internet of things technology and the cloud and analytics and there's a not so intuitive offshoot of this IOT and retail public spaces, which is opening up a whole new business opportunity, which is around digital lighting. And if you think about digital lighting, I now can control a full spectrum electronically, remotely, and then I can tie it to analytics that will look at who's looking at me, what are their expressions, what is their mood, what is their sex, what is their age, and I can have a light display that will best display my goods. And if you look at retail, the lighting of a displaying of food or of apparel is of paramount importance to display the object to the, perf to, to the actual person. And different age groups, different sexes have different eyes. Believe it or not, we do. And they have to have different light. So if you go into Walmart and you look at how their meat displays, it looks great. It's an LED controlled for the background. It's picking up background light. It's picking up the light around it to make the meat really pop. And so I can use understanding who you are, where you are, you're contextualized to change light to sell my products. Not only is it LED controlled, but actually it could be a virtual wall display, mm -hmm. right? So if you look at the train stations or subway in Korea and you, you're, you're making your busy way through the city and you're getting to your home, you can actually go up and shop right there on the wall. It's actually a virtual store. It's a mm -hmm. display of what it is I would purchase and now that is gonna show up at home when I'm there. So if, if I look at new applications that take the analog, right, what we see and touch and feel, but now to the pure digital, that's virtual, it's gonna be incredible when you start looking at out of home location-based advertising, you mentioned earlier, where you've got either facial recognition or eye beacons or some way to know the personal uh, elements associated with what the consumer might be willing to publish, and then the right ad that is meeting them at that point where there may be a value. Right, so the 20% off on the sweater or the elements associated with the right message that would be a targeted to me uh, as a male of my age where I, where I happen to be, as a matter of fact. Not just the demographic psychographic, but I happen to be in front of um, Dick's Sporting Goods or I happen to be you know, at a shopping mall or I happen to be at a theme park at a ball game. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be really exciting, the composition of the new value and services that combine retail, iBeacon, location-based services, mm -hmm. and then the technologies connecting, um, such that it's composable for this new value. Yeah. So it really seems like it's gonna come down to the companies that take advantage of this technology are gonna win. You know, the, the theme here at CES, Gary Shapiro is, is, is a, as a CEO is, innovate or die right all right so i mean that is the message it, it basically is those who have their the naysayers or a head in the sand or maybe it's going to happen later i would say caution yeah you know, you've already asked the, the question when will this stuff happen we already know from multiple ceo discussions that the decisions have already been made it is an all or nothing game and if you're not there you're not there and let me give you one piece of data that, that is shocking if you think about the first connected business that really paid off it was managed print Go back in your head 10 years before we had managed print. Remember the brands of printers you all had? They're all gone. Because once they proved the business case of managed print, it was 30 to 40% cheaper to go to managed print and using analog analytics to decide what printers go where and how you do it. So the first four sales were long. The fifth sale was simple, and it went not a hockey stick, it was a vertical, it was El Capitan. It went vertical. <laughs> and if you didn't have a connected printer, you couldn't play. 
The average new product development cycle time for printers was 18 months. This happened in six months. If you didn't have a printer ready in that time period, you missed the B2B market. And to my point, look at the printers around your office today. None of them are the same as they were 10 years ago. But Ted, I think it's a redefinition of what business am I in? That's right. Am I a manufacturer of a widget things with functions or am I really in a device plus services business for which new value is being created? I'm no longer in the railroad business, right? I'm actually the transportation business and airplanes are coming, right? That's where we are. Well, thank you gentlemen very much for joining us.